before I get into the tutorial, I just wanted to ask you guys two things. First of all, would you mind if I made um, a couple videos for new Mac users because I'm getting a bunch of subscribers that are beginners, I guess you can say, and they really need help with their Mac. And I know that most of my subscribers probably are experienced Mac users, so I was just wondering if that was a problem. Let me know in the comments. And also, if you have a question about anything, please leave a comment because I'm probably going to make a video soon for frequently asked questions or just questions in general. So I might answer your question. Um, anyways, this video is about keeping your Mac organized, mainly your desktop, because what happens with a lot of people is they'll be browsing the internet and they'll come across a really cool link and then they'll drag that to the desktop because they don't want to bookmark it. They're not going to come back to it multiple times a day or a week or something. So they're going to drag it to the desktop for quick, easy access. Or your friend sent you something on iChat, like a picture, and you drag it to your desktop. Something like that. So that's what this video is for because people's desktops can get really cluttered and I know personally I like to keep my desktop really clean, especially for when I'm recording a video. My first suggestion is perfect for lazy people. Um, it's an application called Camouflage. It's located in your menu bar, you click it, and clicking hide icons will of course hide your icons, and that's all there is to it. So that way whatever's on your desktop, including your hard drive icon, will be hidden completely from view. So no one can see it. It's good for if you're recording a video and you might have personal information on your desktop. And it's good if you just want to focus on something like homework and you don't want anything on your desktop disturbing you. You can also create a hotkey, so a shortcut for this, so you don't always have to go to the menu bar. And while I'm at the whole hide icons thing, ScreenFlow 2.0 has a feature, High Desktop does the same thing. So if you're recording a video and you quickly just want to get all your icons out of the way, that's a good way to do it. If these hard disk icons are bothering you, click anywhere on your desktop just to make sure that Finder is the active application. Hit Command, Comma, or go to Finder Preferences. And under Show These Items on the Desktop, you can uncheck hard disks and external disks. So as you can see, my Time Machine Backup, my iDisk, and my actual hard drive icon have disappeared. You can also hide CDs if you have a CD in your computer. So that's a useful way to actually hide some icons on your desktop. The next suggestion is something that organized people generally do, which is have a folder for everything. So if I open my, a finder window, um, go to my documents and I have a bunch of folders within my documents folder so everything has a place I know right now it's messy but um, I've been busy okay <laughs> I haven't had time to organize anyways um, it's a really good idea to make folders for everything so everything has a place and for example for school especially I have within my school folder a bunch of other folders and since I'm too lazy to go into my documents and then go to my school folder I drag the shortcut to my school folder into the sidebar here in the finder. So you can do this with any folder. Let's say you access your um, downloads folder office. You can drag it, the folder picture here, whoops, and drag it into your places as long as there's a little line here and it's not going into another folder. And there you go. So now there's a shortcut to download. You can always drag it off. And it doesn't delete the folder itself, just the shortcut. So that's one way to do it if you think it's annoying to have a bunch of folders within a folder because it might take too long to get to. So that's one reason why people like to store things on their desktop. It's right in front of your face, it's easy to get to. So using the sidebar in your finder is a good idea. Another good idea is using stacks. Just drag the folder on your dock on the right side of the little divider and a stack will be created. So I have an application stack and a document stack and a download stack. So to delete a stack, same thing, just drag it out of your dock and the stack itself will be deleted. Um, if that's not good enough for you, if you still really want to have a folder on your desktop, um, what I like to do is create an alias because I like having the actual folder 
in a specific location. I like having my school folder inside of my documents folder because I consider schoolwork documents. I don't consider it something to be put on the desktop, but that's just my thing that I have going on in my head. Um, so to make an alias, go to the folder you want to make an alias of, right click it, and select make alias. So what this will do is copy the actual folder, but pretty much make a shortcut to the folder. So I have an alias for school on my desktop, and what happens here is if I drag something into this folder, it'll go into the original school folder as well, the one that's located within the documents folder. So I hope you understood that explanation. That's my tip for the ones who really like to be organized. And the final tip has to do with two applications. The first one was in my most recent video, seven essential Mac applications. I think there were seven of them. It's called Quiet Read, and it's a free application that's located in your menu bar, and you can use it to store links. So if I'm in Safari and I go to um, Lifehacker, I'm like in some long URL that I want to remember, but I don't want to bookmark. Just drag it up to the application, and the little number in that mug changes to forks. Now I have four links up there. And there it is. Now to get to it, I just double click. And it's going to load it again. And there it is. So that's Quiet Read. Really useful app, and it's free. So definitely download it. It was in my Essential Mac Applications video for a reason. And the second Mac application is not free, but I think that it's so useful for people with cluttered desktops or neat freaks. So I think it's worth the download, just to download the demo at least. And it's called Shovebox. It's also located in the menu bar. It's pretty much quiet read, but with a lot more features. So you can drag things in here like links or um, pictures and text. You can even import your clipboard. So if I click it, the little icon, go to capture, you can make a new text note, as you can see here. And from within that text note, let's say I want to call it um, test. Uh, okay, so there's my note. From here, you can export it. So pretty much save it anywhere on your computer. You can print it. You can delete it right from here. Um, change the font, spell check, add comments. and even make a hotkey if you really need to access this note. So I can record a shortcut. Let's say I want to make it Alt-T. Okay. Now if I close that window and I hit Alt-T, look, the note comes up. I think that's really useful. And now I can delete it because I don't need it anymore. You can also capture from your eyesight. This option isn't available for me right now because I'm recording and you can sync it with your iPhone. It has an iPhone application. I think that's so helpful. And you can get to your recent entries from right here. Preferences. I'm not going to really go through here. But um, you might be thinking, well, Shovebox, it's kind of like a desktop in your menu bar because you're just shoving more stuff into it. Well, there's this neat little feature called Organize. And you can make folders by clicking on this plus button. So I have a YouTube folder and I have two things that I've shoved in the YouTube folder and then the inbox is just the general default folder. And so for example I have this midterm slideshow unit 4. If I press the space bar it's kind of like quick look and it opens it up. So here it is. It's really cool actually. It's faster than opening up preview to view it. And it's like you got all the, you can see everything. So you can change the title, again, print it, export it, navigation, zoom in. You can also flag things if they're really important. You can use Shovebox as a to-do list type thing even. You can add a label if you want to be really organized. And I'm just going to show you Shovebox in action. So let's say... I'm on Gizmodo. And then I go to Apple Moves Forward with Tablets Trademark. Okay, so this is a really long URL. I don't want to drag it to my desktop. That's too messy. So I drag it into Shovebox. 
Now you'll notice it gives me two options, web archive or bookmark. Bookmark pretty much is like just storing the link, you'll click the bookmark, you'll just click the link from Shutbox and it'll open up in Safari. But web archive is really interesting. So I'll show that to you. It goes downloading because it's actually making a web archive. Now if I go to recent entries, Apple moves forward, click that. It seems like it's opening it in a browser, but it's not. So it has the title from the web page, and you can scroll through it. It's completely functional as a web page. You can click links, but the links don't open within this window. It opens in your browser. So it's a really fast way of getting to websites, web pages. So instead of bookmarking it and waiting for Safari to load it, you can just open it right away in your Shovebox application. And that's pretty much it for this video. So like I said at the beginning, let me know if beginner Mac tutorials are okay. It would only be like one a month, something like that. And I would probably try to make it so I'd have a beginner tutorial and then a normal video in the same week, if I can. And also ask me any questions in the comments so I can include that in a questions and answers video. So thanks for watching. Hope this video helped. And... See you in my next video.